the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome to Trinity on this frigid second Sunday in Lent and the day of the famous St. Patrick's Day Parade. With all the uh, festivities outside, I'm reminded of the story that a retired pastor friend of mine tells about his day, days in a college frat house. His frat house was in a part of town where there was not too much attention to zoning, and so he and his buddies built a little barn next to their house and bought a donkey for a pet. And they loved this donkey, and they took good care of it, though it was a stubborn, obstinate beast that they could never quite control or move. If they wanted it to come out or go back in, it would just kind of stick its feet in the ground and refuse. It had its mind made up that it would do what it wanted to do when it wanted to do it, no matter what. Might remind you of some people you know. But sometimes very late at night or very early in the morning, the donkey would be awake and get lonely and bray, do that hee-haw thing, talking to his frat brothers, making their house, I'm sure, all the more popular with the neighbors. And the donkey's name was Nicodemus. Today, under the shadow, the cover of the shadows, too early in the morning or too late, at night, Nicodemus, the non-donkey version, comes to speak with Jesus. And late at night, lying awake or early in the morning when we know we should be asleep, this is the time when our minds begin to race, and it's also the time that we do things when we don't want other people to see us doing them. And so, looking back over his shoulders to make sure that nobody sees him, Nicodemus comes to see Jesus for himself. He's skeptical. He is obstinate. No one is going to lead him or tell him what to do. He comes to the true light of the world, but he is more comfortable in the shadows. I think maybe a lot of us can relate a little to Nicodemus. We don't want to get too close to the light. We like to sit further back in the church. We don't always want to be seen by others as a Christian or as a church person. And though we're not exactly sure what we always believe, we are darn sure we are not going to be led or told what to do. So this back and forth dialogue this morning between Jesus and Nicodemus hits a little close to home for us today because it's really the kind of conversation that we can imagine having with Jesus ourselves. Teacher, teacher, we know you must be from God because of all the amazing things you do. There must be something to you, so who are you? But Jesus counters back not very politely to our question. You will never know. You will never see God's kingdom. You will never know me unless you are born again. Born again. We may not know much, but we know we don't like that term. But the word, again, can be translated lots of different ways. Born again, born anew, born from above. Jesus says you must be born anew. You must be born again from above. Your whole self, your whole life must begin again for you to know me. Faith is not some little addition that we add on to our already completed house to finish it off. Faith in Christ is a new foundation for our lives, the tearing down and rebuilding from scratch of what has been. You must be born anew from scratch, Jesus says. But Nicodemus can't hear the metaphor. He's not into poetry at the moment. He's just digging his heels in like the donkey that he is. Born again. How can you be born after becoming old? Can you crawl back into your mother's womb to come out again? I once asked someone in our family if he could be born again. His first reaction was, what? 
like he questioned my sanity or misunderstood the question. Maybe he's a little Nicodemus in the family, but finally he answered, no, I'm too big to get born, and it would be too hard for me to get back in mommy's tummy, saying that. It's too hard, impossible for me. How often, when we look to our own strength, our own abilities, are we tempted to despair like that? How often do we look at our own situations, our own problems, our own futures, and judge them impossible, too hard for us or anyone else to deal with? But what is too hard for us is not too hard for God. Where we can't, God can. Where we don't see a way, he is the way. Where we only perceive the end, he is the beginning. Where we cannot see a way to start over, he starts us over, giving us new birth, a new start every day, every moment in our baptism, reborn by water and the Spirit. For God so loved the world, even this world that is broken and sorrowing and unbelieving and filled with skeptics in the shadows like Nicodemus and you and me. God so loved this world that he gave, freely, unreservedly gave, his only begotten Son. He gave that which is most precious to him. He gave himself so that whosoever believes in him, anyone and everyone who simply just trusts in him, should not perish, not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. John 3.16, the gospel in a nutshell, Martin Luther said simple and childlike, nourishing milk for those of us who find ourselves, despite ourselves, born anew every day by water and the Spirit. Nicodemus appears once here at the very beginning of the gospel, skeptical, stubborn, unsure, tentative in the shadows. But he also appears once more at the end of the gospel. Once more, after God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son even to death on a cross, then Nicodemus came again. But this time, in public, this time in the light of day, Nicodemus came to claim and help bury Jesus' dead body. And I wonder if as he held his Lord's broken body, he remembered Jesus' words to him, you must be born again. Impossible for us, but more than possible for him. For on the third day, on that first Easter, Christ was born again out of death, out of hell, out of the shadow of darkness, and into the brightness of new and everlasting life. And so all who simply trust in him, trust that God so loved you and me and this whole world that he gave his only son for us, then the impossible will happen for us too. We shall not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life with him, a life that begins now, today, as we live with faith towards him and fervent love for one another. So come now this morning out of the shadows. Come before your Lord who has given you a new birth by water and the Spirit. Come now and hold his body in your hands as Nicodemus once did. Come and find yourself held like a newborn in those everlasting arms for you must be born again. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.